and welcome back to Cottage Talk. This is our post-match reaction show. My five takeaways from Fulham's 1-0 victory against Luton Town. We will also have a post-match show to go along with this that will be in more detail. These are just my five takeaways from this match, which was a struggle for Fulham. But they found a way to win. That is the bottom line. That is actually going to be one of my takeaways. Just a little precursor to that. But in the end, Fulham got the goal and they held on at the very end. It was a a nervy victory at Craven Cottage today. But I will take a win any way you can get it in the Premier League. This is not going to be an easy game going into it. I know I predicted 3-1. to but I did not factor in many things, and they'll be showing up in my five takeaways. But the most important thing are the three points, and Fulham got them, and that was very good for them. For this season, this was a pivotal game. They needed all three points, and they got it. That, to me, is the best thing to come out of this match. And that's not even one of my five takeaways. But let's get started. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. Okay, let's start with number five. And this one has been a theme under Marco Silva. It goes back to the championship. Number five is this. Fulham continued to struggle against a three center back formation. They just continued to struggle. This was 3-5-2. And they basically, I'm talking about Luton Town, had a very good game plan. They were going to make it very difficult for Fulham to create opportunities. And it really showed itself throughout this match, especially in the first half. And this we saw in the championship. But whenever Fulham played against a team that had uh, three center backs defensively, I, I was always concerned because I still have not seen a convincing win when Fulmer played against a team that plays this formation. So for me, this was uh, something that I was looking at and I should have factored in more as I was watching the game, as I was previewing the game as well. I did not give it as much credence as I should have because for whatever reason, Fulham have struggled. The way that they play does not match up great against a team that just sits back and tries to beat you on the counter like this. Fulham had no room to move as you got close to the box. It was just completely, utterly congested. So for me, the fact that they struggled again to do this is a little worrying. However, I don't think Fulham are going to be facing another team that plays this way. And it also shows that when Fulham in the Premier League have the ball more than their opponent, they haven't looked as sharp as I would hope because while they're in the Premier League, they've been better being a counterattacking team. They really have. They've been very good at it. And uh, they've actually, that might be why that they have given such fits to teams in the top six and the top 10 in general because they make it difficult, and they try to beat you on the counter. It actually plays to Fulham's strengths with their wing play, with their fullbacks. They can break fairly quickly. And this one, they're having more of the ball. And you have your center backs, especially in the first half, being extremely conservative. It was going to lead to, at times, pretty comfortable defensively for Luton Town. They could not find that pass, or they were – Again, not moving the ball quick enough. What was interesting here is that before the second half began, I saw on the broadcast Marco talking to Diop and then also talking to Reem. And uh, the announcers were talking about this, that when you play against a team like this, the center backs are vital to basically starting everything for you to get in the play moving and Tim Ream and Issa Diop, they did their job. They kept the clean sheet. Let's call it what it is. But they were, especially in the first half, very conservative in their passing. They just did not move the ball quick enough. And um, that, to me, just shows a little bit of a flaw. Fortunately, Fulham will not be playing 
that frequently against a team that plays with three center backs like this. So hopefully it won't affect them too much. Let me move on to number four. And number four is Jao Polina showed once again why he is so valuable to Fulham. Now, Ludentown did not have the ball that often. But when they did break, they had some opportunities to score. And if it wasn't for some really good play from Jao Polina with his tackling, they might have had even more opportunities to score. He is so valuable to Fulham. I'm so happy he is still with the club. I hope Fulham hold on to him for a while. I know there's stuff about January. I hope they can hold on to him until the summer because you can see what he means to this team. He basically not just protects them, but just sets the tone for everything that they do. If you are in a dangerous situation, he seems to be the player to get you out of it. And he did in this match. And there aren't that many players out there that can do what he does. His tackling ability, his ability to read the game, his tenacity is just um, special. And I think you saw this in this match. Fulham really needed Jao Polina to be at his best. And I thought he played very good in this match. And that's why he is my number four. Number three was an interesting one because... Before the match began, I saw the starting 11. I was a little bit concerned about this one. But my number three is Timothy Castagna was very good in this match. And this is a huge positive for Fulham Football Club, who have struggled to find depth when it comes to fullbacks. It's good to know that Timothy Castagna can play right back. But in a pinch, he was able to play left back here because Anthony Robinson was not able to go. Apparently, he came back from the international break with a knock, and then you had to have Castagna, who's naturally a right back, play left back. He can play both positions, and he fit in very well. He is not Jedi. He does not have that kind of pace, but his ability to read the game going forward and being defensively sound was very valuable in this game. I thought Castagna played very well and could be a call for man of the match. That's how good he played. And this is really just something to really think about moving forward because it happens to Kenny Tete on the right or Anthony Robinson on the left, and you need Castagna to fill in. You know he can fill in and you're not going to have any drop-off. That's the big part. You had no drop-off here. You had a very consistent quality performance from Timothy Castagna. So that's why he is in at number three. Number two, before I mention number two, something really to watch, and I am really rooting for Jimenez to score his first goal because I think that that could really get him going. But the question is with him, does he really suit how Fulham play? Now, he works very hard. The way he plays striker, is it really working well with Fulham? Could he possibly play? It was actually suggested to me maybe a number 10 role. Maybe that's where he'd be suited better, possibly. But he works very hard. I want him to succeed. So we'll see how this goes. But um, I thought he struggled in this match. So that's why my number two is very important. And it is Vinicius and Awobi changed the game. Let's first talk about Awobi because I thought Alex Awobi played well. I thought he was a little nervous to start off, but he came in for Harrison Reed. I thought he did his job. He offers something different than Harrison Reed. He's more physical in central midfield. So again, I thought that this was a positive, had a chance to score, not a great shot by Alex Iwobi, but I thought his presence helped. But I also think Carlos Vinicius was a big presence. He looked like that striker. He's not Mitro, but he is someone that can hold up the ball and he can actually really, uh, get into positions to score, as you saw here. Set up really nicely 
from William, who I don't think had a great game, but this is a great pass. But the goalkeeper couldn't save it. And then there was Carlos Vinicius where he needed to be to score the winning goal and change the game. But it wasn't just that. He was holding up the ball very well. And I thought he did a very nice job. He had a chance to score a second, which would have put the match away. I wish he did. I think if he just went up with his first touch, he would have scored. But he gets himself into very good positions. I'm glad that Carlos Vinicius is still with Fulham Football Club. And um, he's actually going to give Marco something to think about in the next match, should he start. Did he earn a start over Raul Jimenez? There's an argument to be made because I thought Carlos Vinicius, along with Awobi, changed the game. So you can't take that away from Vinicius. And like I mentioned, Awobi did his job as well. Coming up next to end this episode, I'm going to share my number one takeaway from this match for Fulham against Luton Town. Okay, so here is my number one takeaway coming out of this match for Fulham against Luton Town. Before I do that, I want to give just a lot of credit to Luton Town. They had a game plan to their manager, Rob Edwards, all their players. They played very hard, and they made things very difficult for Fulham. So they deserve credit. Did they deserve to get something from this match? Well, they did create two good opportunities in the first half, and then late on in the match, they gave themselves a chance to get the equalizer. So they deserve credit. I don't think they deserved anything from this match. I don't. I think Fulham deserved to win the match. Yes, they dominated the ball. Yes, they did all that. I'm talking about Fulham. But they also got the goal. And that's why this is my number one takeaway. And this is very important. Finding a way to win is a mark of a good team. You're not always going to have great performances. I don't think this is a great performance from Fulham Football Club. Sometimes you just need to find a goal. Find a way to win. And they did this here. As the match progressed later on in the match, you know, just some gaps, not a lot of gaps, but just some room for the Fulham players to get passes in. And this one was to William who set up the goal from Vinicius. And again, but the thing about it is they found a way to get that goal. And that to me is very important to find a way to win because even when you're not playing at your best, even when you're playing against a team that you're really not great playing against because of the formation, you still got all three points. Could say the same thing against Everton. Fulham, in those two victories, not great performances, but six points. That's a mark of a good team because you're not always going to play your best. But if you can win and not play your best, that's a good team to me. And if you keep on doing it, that's a very good team to me. So for me, this is huge news for Fulham Football Club that they continue to find ways to win matches. It's vital. It's so important. It really is. Because... I don't think Fulham are going to be in a relegation battle. I think they're going to be comfortably mid-table. I predicted seventh. It's going to be very difficult for my prediction to come true. But if they continue to find ways to win, I'm going to be in with a shout by the end of the season because you don't have to have the most talented team. You just have to have a team that finds ways to win, that just does not give up. This team doesn't give up. This team plays together, and they – find a solution. This was the solution. Came late, but they got the solution, the goal from Carlos Vinicius. In the end, mark for me of a good football team. So that's how I'm going to end this show. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other film supporters find us. As I mentioned, we will have a full post-match show of this match as well. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. My name is Russ Goldman. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening to Cottage Talk, part of the Talk Sport Fan Network.